Hey chaps and chapettes, welcome back to another fantastic episode. We are back and tackling the next stage of this repair. In the last one you saw I chopped out the wheel arch. I was hoping to save more than I did, but sometimes you just got to keep cutting because you got to get past the rust. So it's perfectly fine over here if I could slide my way out of the photo camera thing. So we're all good to about here-ish. I put the primer on, I can't really see now. But right about there is all good, and it goes perfect back that way. So we're going to just copy what we did here with uh, about an inch, and then I think it was 30 mil underneath with a fold, and then shrink it, uh, shrink it going this way, and stretch it going that way. So it has like a double curve in it. So it's got to go down, but it's also got to go tuck under as well, which is always fun. I always get impressed by those people who make these sections of one bit. I would love the equipment that they have because it would make, you know, so if they can make that in one piece, you know they've got some pretty good equipment because that's not a uh, simple task to do that. So kudos to the people who can, who make all the repair sections because I know you can buy this section down here and you, the people who make the wheel arches, I believe it's custom garage, they can actually make you an entire coupe quarter panel, but I recommend you sit down when you get the bill. <laughs> but it is very impressive, you've got to go. That's primo stuff right there. Um, but we're going to be replacing that bit and putting in the replacement wheel arch section. And then have to sort of tackle that mess down there, which is pretty bad. Um, not the worst I've ever seen, because I fixed some really bad cars. I seem to get nothing but cars that are just, wow, how is that holding together kind of bad? But, I don't know, it's, I prefer to specialize in rust repair and anything else is just a bonus. Um, so, extreme rust repairs I quite like, because I like seeing the really bad to really good, it's sort of, it's a nice, uh, reward versus risk ratio or something like that so yes a few of you have spotted I think his name is Mr. Spotty or something like that I copied him from a youtuber called Vecor I believe V-E-H-C-O-R he's an American youtuber and he has the little smiley face sticker and it's you will occasionally see it randomly placed in his videos I thought it was quite funny and I thought I'd pay homage to him and do my own little one who I will also place randomly in videos as just a little, ha, there he is. Look at him. <laughs> so, yeah, I did notice one person did, s a couple of people spotted him, and one chap knew where that was from. So, kudos to you, and you know who you are, because that's funny. Um, the other thing I was wondering, now this isn't car related, it's, I've noticed quite a few commenters who gave me the impression that they were also pedal beaters and spray painters. So if you are one, please sing out. I'd love to know. It's not like a, who are you? It's a, just a curiosity thing. I would just love to know who's watching me who also do the same exact thing. Because I do think that people who do this for a living also tend to follow and like all the same stuff. Might because we're a little bit crazy. Um, but you know, if you are one and you're a tradesman, um, sing out, let me know. I'm just curious. Um, it'd be hilarious if most of you were. <laughs> Look at that guy doing all that rubbish work. <laughs> anyway, but if you are one, sing out, put a comment, let me know, because I'd be curious to know. Um, so, first things first is a nice little intro, and then we'll get straight into this. So unfortunately we're today uh, competing with one of the neighbours who seems to be having a grand old time with an angle grinder, which is something I can't control, I just have to deal with. Um, yes, so, 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 getting straight into it without too much chit chat, but I can give the dog a bone. We are going to cut probably right through here, I reckon. I'm just going to go below that <laughs> brazing world right there, but keep the transition see that style line changes and goes up so i don't want to go any lower than where it starts straightening up so i want the curve to stay there so i can join straight into it with that ideally 
So probably up, may, may even be able to only go about that low. Just the only reason I want to save it, and now this might sound ridiculous, but I, I'm going to replace it obviously, but I want to leave it there for now so I know where the lines are joining up, if that makes any sense. So I want to zip across here, down and take that little bit off, and then clean through here and find it exactly where all the holes are, I think. I don't actually think they go much further down. I reckon they tend to stop about here. But it's quite peppered through here. So what we'll do is um, trim that and then clean that and then start making a new piece. And then we can get that glued in. I say glue, but welded. So I hope you enjoy it. Alrighty, chaps. We have made the new section. I'm sorry I didn't show it, but... Um, it required a reasonable amount of concentration while I was doing it. So despite this funky looking shape, that is actually... Oop, how about I look at it when I'm filming? Look at me when I'm looking at you! There we go. So, that's gonna go right there. So, I'll get trimming and I get cutting. Just make sure that's gonna be absolutely perfect, but that should go in there quite nicely, it'd be under here and when I put my new skin on the outside I can join it in through here oops, slippery and then when I take this piece off after this has gone on and the outer skin is then it will be under that which will be fantastic or fantabulous as I like to say so that's I mean it might still require a little bit of tweaking here and there but I would call that a win Pretty darn close. It's hard to get this seat right, but it is right. Bit of an optical illusion, but that's... Bit of a funky shape. But it was all done on... This little guy. Shrinker and stretcher. So one thing you got to watch out, I will add in, when you're uh, stretching it, so you get that curve, when you start putting the, sh the shrinks in here, it will start uh, changing the top shape so it does move around a little bit so you will have to work it backwards and forwards until you get it right but you can make some pretty interesting shapes using that piece of equipment I'm gonna buy another one I reckon so I can have one set up for shrinking one set up for stretching because currently at the moment you have to keep switching the things every time you want to switch what you want to do which is slightly annoying, so I'm going to buy another one and set it up the same way. So one's always set to shrink, one's always set to stretching. But uh, yeah, I'll get cracking on with the next little bit. We'll do pretty much what we did yesterday where we overlapped it, sprayed it, and then we can just trim out la rust and weld it in.
and there we have it actually come out pretty good um, obviously I tacked it and applied it in that uh, time lapse and now I've finished welding and ground it and that is ow solid uh, we've got a little problem down here where it's a little bit on the soft and crunchy side interesting to note when you when I cut <laughs> with these coops and stuff when you cut out the wheel arch this piece actually goes in so when you put them back together you got to remember to pull a bit of tension on it right there because I don't know if we can I noticed that when I was cutting it this piece goes in so when you put your new one in make sure that you put just a wick, Mickey whisker of tension back on it going that way because you can see that it pulls this in I mean it does sit out a little bit because and this is going to be hard to show this piece here actually bulges out slightly and actually touches on the skin just there they all do uh, but most of it's missing but so it comes down and then goes and then back in around I'm not entirely sure why they do that I think it's because the edge of the sill panel actually cuts across here you know that way direction which is why that weird lump is right there but yeah it's a bit complicated but the next step is to trim up the wheel arch and uh, put that in now so that's looking lovely all solid very solid and uh, carrying right along we also went and looked at the new workshop finally the the new one we looked at the other one which was a clone of it we actually looked at the one we're going into and it's looking lovely we should get that right on time so all is happening there so everything is progressing along nicely and we'll catch up in a second when I start trimming up that wheel arch so we're up to the next stage where we're trial fitting in the wheel arch the outer skin effectively and it's actually fitting fairly well I mean it looks a bit funky here because it's overlapped slightly uh, but you know when you trim it up because this actually comes to about here so I've just whittled off the worst of it for now I'll probably trim this pretty much won't cut this any smaller um, I trimmed this down it's a little bit off but it's still got to go that way a little bit so it's not too bad it fits relatively well and the shape isn't offensive just had a visit before of a, a lovely uh, f a subscriber and fan who bought a couple of stickers off me had a good chat with him um, good fun anybody who pops up for a chat is more than welcome um, I always love to have a good chin wag and um, but yes that happened and now we're going to trim this up a bit more and get it all prepped it is actually fairly straightforward it's almost like putting the outer skin on so once you've got the replacement piece to the shape you want it you can then just trim the car to match up and then it's just welded in and go fairly straightforward and then we'll have a wheel arch that goes from here all the way across and down completely rust free and then we'll have to tackle that mess there which will be uh, less than fun so now we've tacked this in temporarily it's also clamped in um, I've sliced off in a straight line the steel that goes under this that was going under it like it is here so that it's edge to edge here like a butt weld and it only goes to out here so what I'm going to do is I've done that so I can sit this on top and then what I'll do and I'll weld it and ground it what I'll do then is come along with my uh, saw here a uh, little air saw so I can do the curves I'll go zip around here and then I'll run the thin cutting disc on the grinder across as I go and then as I go I'll clean it tack it pull it up line it up and then weld it together and then as I go by the time I got to here and it's all been cut that piece which is probably about that wide should be free floating inside that quarter panel I should better just go in through uh, the access hole behind where that quarter window lives or through the boot depending on which way my arms reach and should be able to just pull out that piece and this will be all lovely butt welded so that's what we're going to do next I've sort of <coughs> started prepping it I've tacked it in in a couple of spots and the new inner goes lower than the outer skin so that means that when I do the outer skin I know that it's all good um, that I won't have to take any of this stuff back off this whole back corner is going to be a fair mess to fix but at least we know that the inner is solid to here and the outer is solid to here 
and um, these are really really good I was saying to the chap earlier what you used to do prior to these being available you used to have to use front mudguard ones and for the left rear you'd use the right front and the left front for the right rear and you'd flip them around and they'd be the same um, profile as the rear coupe quarters so if you used to go through the wrecking yards and see front guards with wheel arches chopped out you knew that they went for a coupe <laughs> Uh, and I believe they're also useful for a sedan so if you need um, the wheel arch for a, the back of a sedan I believe it's left front right rear and it's the diagonal opposite is the same shape or at least it gives you something to work from that's very very close so progressing along nicely or nowadays if you want to do it you could probably just buy the sections these are incredibly good no words can describe that. I mean, they give you heaps, so you could probably have done the whole shooting match, but um, that's all I needed to put in, so I'm pretty happy with that. And very solid. I reckon I could pull the car off the stand by grabbing onto that. And also, what I should have done is said before actually showing you this, what I sometimes used to do for customers' cars when they knew they said they were going to put some really big honking meats underneath the back of them. I'd roll the guards for them mid-repair. So to make them super, super tight repair, what I would do is instead of doing this extra fold back, I would just have it come down as a straight, put the outer skin on, and then fold them the skin super far up, because then you don't have, you're not folding two layers, you're folding one layer over the top of effectively a sliver. So you can fold it super, super tight. I mean like insanely tight, and then you just do some light tacks in a, well, you have to do a bit of welding inside here and you're welding this to the inside of the wheel tub so instead of having plug welds through here it's actually folded super tight and it's actually welded on the edge to the inside. You still have to have them welded together um, because it's sort of a structure thing but you can do that if you want to get a super nice uh, lovely clean finish a bit like what modern cars are these days with their wheel arches that are super thin but yes always weld the two of them together they have to be it's, it's a safety thing well, yeah you know what I mean but anyway that's what I'm gonna do and uh, I'll start trimming that in
Right, so that's now tacked in, cut, and uh, the piece has dropped down. Uh, that air saw I was using, which has come from uh, Super Cheap Auto, is not that good. Uh, it just keeps undoing itself no matter how tight you do it up. I just think that might not be the world's greatest design, unfortunately. So normally I talk up tools, uh, but not this one. It's got a, a, th a scrub thread on this side and a grub thread on this side, which straight off the bat is a bad design. Um, but every time you use it, the, the blade just falls out or undoes itself. So I'll be getting my money back on that one. I'm not happy with it and I'll just buy one from somewhere else and try again with a different one. Unfortunately, my snap-on one that lasted forever and took some serious abuse is dead and I currently don't have a, I don't know any snap-on dealers in the area. Um, I did when I got the thing, obviously, because I was in a different area, but I don't know any ones local to me. So I can't fix it yet, but I thought I'd show you this. The piece in there, it's gonna be a bit of an interesting one to reach to. I'll probably get it from this side, but as you can see, if I zoom in, zoom in, it has quite literally dropped down. I haven't touched that. As soon as that last cut, it went plunk and fell off. So all you do is reach in and pull it out and you will have a perfect join for butt welds. So all of that, I mean, I fully expect this to dip in slightly through here. Um, what I'm thinking of doing is when I have a dent pulling machine is once this is welded, I haven't got one at the moment, I might have to borrow one. Um, when this is welded, actually use one of those weld on slide hammers that I used on the Commodore and pull this surface up a little bit. Uh, this bit's gonna be okay, but obviously it's going to, because it's in the middle of a panel, it's going to dip one way or the other. I mean, I probably can actually reach in there because it's quite a good access in here and actually tap it out with a hammer and bring it up that way. But I'm gonna actually drop the video here uh, for sake of it being too long. But that is the gist of getting that in and the real wheel arch repaired and the new section tacked in. I mean, that, now it's as simple as it could be. You just tack, 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 tack. Just space them out from each other until you're all done. Um, and you can, if you want, grind down after each tack so that the next weld has a, a nice clean place to join it. You don't have to, but you can. Uh, it's a sort of, that's a pretty much a preference um, one. You don't have to, but you can. So I'm gonna leave it here and I'll catch you on the next video. But this repair now, all I have to do is just weld and grind and we're done. So I'll leave it here and catch you on the next one. Thank you very much for watching and subscribing.